السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Whenever I call out to Allah Almighty or I supplicate, I ask for something from the one who made me, from the Creator, I always am looking forward to a response. And I'm sure the same is with every one of us. Whenever we call out to the Almighty, we want a response. We ask Him for our matters and our things to cure us, to give us, to deliver us from evil, to protect us from harm or to grant us passing of an examination or perhaps a job or whatever it may be, we always hope that he is going to respond and he does respond. Allah Almighty says, I hear exactly what you are saying. And even before you utter it, I can, I already know what you want to say. Sometimes we have something we want to ask the Almighty, but we've said it wrong. He listens to what we wanted rather than what we said. He knows deep down if I've made a mistake in the name of someone I want to marry and I didn't know the exact name. And I said, for example, one name instead of another, the Almighty knows exactly who you wanted. He's not going to hold against you the mistake in name, right? But remember one thing, when you want a response from the one you're calling out to, you need to have a connection with him. Without a connection, how do you expect him to respond to you? If someone were to ask you something simple from you, would you give them? If they really had no connection to you, they did the opposite of what you wanted them to do. They've always hurt you, harmed you, etc. Done things that are really embarrassing, whatever. And then they want to ask you for something. You've got to have a good heart to be able to give them. A lot of the times, if people were to ask us things and they were closer to us, we'd give them even more than what they want. Imagine someone come to you and say, can you please give me $120? Are they called dollars, I think, isn't it? TDDs, if I'm not mistaken. Can you give me $120? If you're a wealthy person and that's a really, really lovely person, you say, forget the 100 years, 200, man. Agreed. Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters, your relationship with your Lord matters. It matters. Why does it matter? When I ask him, I want him to give me and bless me with more than what I've asked him. He's already done that, even though we don't deserve it a lot of the times. Like I said yesterday, when we are breathing, the heartbeat and so much more, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the faculties, the hearing, the feeling and so on. Yesterday, I was thinking about something amazing. Here in Trinidad, you have different types of food. Some of it is a little bit spicy, right? They say, would you like this condiment? What condiment? You almost, I needed a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Brother, I don't need the water, but thank you so much. Uh, you've never ever seen me drink water in the public like this. Imagine me stopping and saying, I need a little bit of water. But the brother loves me because I cleared my throat two or three times. Still, I wouldn't say, hold on guys, I need to drink water unless I was really stuck. May Allah bless you and bless all of us. By the way, it's Trini water, right? Maybe I should go for it. I can break the rule today. Nonetheless, remember something. What was I saying? Fire. They have a designated fireman here who said there are too many people here. Did you hear that? Allahu Akbar. I think we've got to give him some dark shades today. Alhamdulillah. Nonetheless, we needed the fireman when they gave me the condiments and he wasn't there. He should go to the back and do the tasting of some of the, the munch that's there. May Allah grant us goodness. Allah blesses us with the faculty of taste, the sense, taste. Have you sat and thought for a moment what exactly that is? Taste. Imagine how sophisticated the system of tasting is and it's connected to your nose and your breathing and I found that out properly in Corona. You can't taste anymore. You can't smell anymore because your smell and your taste connected. Imagine you can taste something sweet, something not sweet. 
You enjoy certain things because your tongue loves them. Subhanallah. Your tongue and your nose put together. Now I'm a bit of a doctor, so I can tell you they are connected, right? I, I, I tasted this and I like it because Allah, the Almighty who made me, has uniquely blessed me with a gift known as the sense of taste. And so that so I can taste and I like this and I don't like this. And this is chili and this is not chili. I wonder how it was when we were having chili while we didn't have the ability to taste during Corona. I can't remember because I didn't have the chili. I should have had it. That doesn't mean I'm asking for Corona again. But perhaps the reason I give this example is to show you we've been blessed with things we haven't even thought of. We've taken them for granted. We haven't even asked the Almighty, Oh Lord, give me the sense of taste. Oh, unless it's taken away. Unless it's taken away. Many times we don't realize the favors of the Almighty upon us until they're taken away. When it's too late, we say, Oh, I actually had this. Well, you had it. There we are. When you had it, you didn't appreciate it. And now that it's gone, you are saying, Oh, I should have and I shouldn't have and so on. May Allah bless us in order for us to be blessed. My brothers, my sisters, with the true blessings of the Almighty, we should develop a relationship with this Almighty, the maker, the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of your existence. Will you not call out to him and say, Oh, my Lord, oh, you who made me have mercy on me, forgive me. Grant me the goodness of this world and the next. When I return to you, make things easy for me. Subhanallah. Abraham's call in the desert. Yesterday we saw how he developed a relationship with his maker by following what the instructions were to him without even understanding them. There is another instruction that he followed without understanding. And the reason he followed it without understanding it is because he knew where the instruction came from. He knew. I remember seeing a clip of a few ducks near a waterfall. You might have seen it. And the one duckling with the mother duck, there were a few ducklings. The one duckling fell and went down the waterfall. And what happened? The mother paced a little bit and the mother decides, well, I'm going to jump too. And so the mother goes down the waterfall and the mother was okay on the other side of the waterfall or downstream. And then all of the ducklings, one after the other, they trusted their mother. Follow me, basically. Your mother told you to jump, you jumped. Why? Because is your mother going to tell you to jump into something that's going to be disastrous? No. Well, I hope not. Some of the Trini mothers are a bit rough, you know. The fathers are even more rough. <laughs> Could happen sometimes. Calm down, calm down. You should always want the best, not just for your children, but the children of everyone else too. If I see little children, I always try to give them a moment if I can. The reason is those are the kids. The future lies in their hands by the will of the Almighty. When we're gone, they'll remember as they grow older. You know what? There was someone who was kind to me. Let me be kind to the others. So you've set a beautiful trend. And the circle continues rather than starting a circle where all the old people are people who shout and scream and yell and tell us to get lost. So when they grow older, they'll shout louder, scream much more and not only tell them to get lost, but swear them with swear words. Allah grant us forgiveness. So the ducklings all went down and guess what? It was so amazing, so touching. I read the comments, people saying so cute, others saying wow, others saying this. But when Allah Almighty, your maker, told you to do something, then you doubt it. But when the duckling jumped in and you saw how the mother went and everyone else followed because the mother said follow, then everyone followed and they were all saying how lovely it was and how beautiful it was. Where are we? Here is an example. If your loved one were to tell you just jump, don't worry, you jump, you would jump. There it goes. They say, oh, he's so in love that if she says jump, he would say how high. You say how high, that's not in love. No way. You still ask the question. Jump. Uh, and you jump to say, was that good enough? Then you're in love. You see why? You didn't ask how high. Jump as high as you can. They told you jump, you jump. But they say, oh, if he said jump or if she said jump, he would say how high. 
Don't be fooled, my beloved sisters and daughters. How high means he's buying time from you. That's all. How high? Say very high. Well, you know what? I can, I will, I should, I, I probably shall, but uh, you know, maybe not that high. Maybe higher. What about what if I jump higher? All this is buying time, wasting time. That's what it is. You do not want to fulfill the instruction. Jump, jump. That's it. Ibrahim alayhi salam was told, sacrifice your son. He said, oh my son, I've been instructed to sacrifice you. Let's go. No questions asked. Because he knew where the instruction came from. The one instructing me loves me more than my mom and my dad and everyone put together. He owned me and owns me and shall own me. And he gave me temporarily to my parents and my family. That's what he did. Do you really and truly belong to your parents? The answer is temporarily, momentarily, for as long as the true maker who truly owns you allows that lease to be. Where were you prior to the time you came onto this earth? You were with the Almighty. And wh what were your parents doing? They didn't own you. They didn't have you. They were praying for you. That's if you're lucky. Others say it was a big mistake. Imagine I've come across people in my life of counseling where the mothers or the fathers, more so the fathers sometimes they say, you know what? They actually tell their children you were a big mistake. I was on contraceptives. I forgot one day and you came about. Big blunder. How can you tell that to your children? But people are doing it. We didn't want you. We were about to abort you. But then suddenly we decided against it. That child is innocent. How on earth are you expected to digest a parent telling you we were going to abort you? Well, mom, just execute me now, isn't it? Is that what you want? How can you say that? Be ashamed. Come on, man. It's okay. So what if for you it was a blunder for the Almighty? It was never a mistake. Don't say, don't ever be that type of a person who has to tell the child or the children, you were a blunder. I regret having you. Why would you say that? May Allah Almighty forgive us and may Allah Almighty grant us steadfastness. We belong to Allah. We belong to the maker. And like I said, he loves us so much that even without asking, he gives us. Ibrahim alayhi salam followed the instruction Allah gave him more than what he asked. Way beyond it. A few instructions followed. If you and I were to follow the instructions of the Almighty, he would give us way beyond our imagination. People today are looking for what? More than anything else, they're looking for contentment. You do not get contentment without a connection with your maker. You can have power, authority, wealth, good looks, everything. The whole world can be attracted to you and by you. But your contentment lies in your connection with your maker. Do you get up to pray? Do you cry to your Lord? Do you have a connection with the one who made you? If the answer is yes, good news, my brother, my sister. Whatever you found on earth, you're going to leave it behind. Every single thing. You're going to leave it behind. What are you going to take with you? Your good deeds. So do some good deeds before you go. Here is the Prophet Abraham. What was the call in the desert? Rabbana inni askantu min Amazing call in the desert. He says, Oh my Lord, I am leaving my family here on your instruction. And obviously it's a land where there was nothing. It was just grains of sand in the desert, countless grains of sand in the hot desert with no sign of water, no sign of life, no sign of anything. But because the instructor, the one who loves him and all of us more than our own parents said, leave them and you go. He went. And as he's going, he's calling out saying, oh, my Lord, I've left them in this valley in which there is no plantation at all. There is nothing. Oh Allah, I've left them in order to obey you and worship you. I'm going. 
I've left them. So what does he say? Obviously, he wants Allah to take care of them. He says, I want you to make the hearts of the people inclined towards going to where they are. Mecca. Today, speak to any believer and they will tell you it holds a special place in our hearts. If I were to tell you there is a free ticket to go to Mecca, just put your name in the hat. All our names will be in that hat. If I were to say who wants to go to Mecca, our hands will all be up. So much so that if you turned around and looked at that model for educational purposes that was put up there of the Kaaba, it is there to show you and to give you a little bit of what it looks like and a few of the things around it and the black stone and where the Hatim is and where the Mizab is and so on to learn from it. Why? Because we love Mecca so much. How do you and I love Mecca? It was the prayer. It was the call of Abraham in the desert. Oh my Lord, I obey your instruction. Help me, help my family. Allah says, you don't worry. Generations, right up to the end of time, the prophet Abraham will be celebrated. Simply because he followed the instruction of the Almighty without understanding it. He knew where it came from. If he is asking me, I know. I've got to get it done. No questions asked. That is true love. Not the how high of today. Not the how high of today. You get what I mean? When the people of Banu Israel were told to sacrifice an animal, they began to ask question upon question. What type? What color? Where from? How? Why? And Allah said later, if they didn't ask a single question and they just sacrificed it, it would have been sufficient. That was the people of Banu Israel with the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. So with us, we're instructed a few simple basic instructions to discipline your life. And you and I still think we have a say in it. No, I'm not going to listen. But Allah says, come on. I know I'm asking you to do this for your betterment, not for mine. I don't need it. You need it. Be disciplined. Be upright. Be steadfast. Be a person with sound morals and values. Worship me alone. Follow the blessed path of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Respect all the prophets that have come. Respect others. Be kind to the rest of the creatures I made. Those are the instructions of the Almighty. Don't consume a few things that are harmful for you. And you may consume certain things because the way it was done and prepared is a proper way that is beneficial for you. And then we think to ourselves, ah, let's think about it. Maybe, maybe not. Again, yesterday, when I spoke about quitting the habit of smoking, people had a problem. People had a problem. Have I said something bad? Have I said something bad? If I were to tell you my brothers, my sisters quit smoking, quit smoking. Imagine puffing, puffing what? The taste buds we were talking about earlier are the very taste buds that you're damaging. And who gave them to you? The Almighty. I remember there was a man when I spoke about quitting cigarettes. He was 90 in his 90s. He told me I'll never quit smoking because I'm 90 something. I can't remember what exactly it was. He says I'm living and I'm a chain smoker from the age of about 20. I said, uncle, you might be an exception, but others, they may die. We don't want to listen today. Not at all. Never mind to the voice of reason, but to the Lord of the worlds. We're not bothered. How do you expect blessings? Here we are today talking about the call of Abraham in the desert simply for us to be able to learn a lesson to say, you know what? I need to come. I need to come towards my maker, not go far away from him. Let me come. I lead a happy life. Concentrate on what you have. You, you are married. You have a family. Concentrate on them. Look at them with the eye of love. Smile at them. Say good words to them. They will always be a more handsome guy than your husband. They will always be a prettier woman than your own wife. But prettiness and handsomeness is all outward. The package itself that fitted with you, appreciate it. You've had children, bless. It's a blessing from the Almighty. If you would like to give your kids the biggest gift ever, learn to respect the parent that you've had them with. I do know that in some cases there is a toxic relationship. Divorce is permissible, but only as a last resort. 
usually when you initially get married for the first few years there might be turbulence don't just give up unless there are big red flags but you don't just give up on it so easily as the people do today not at all you have to be strong you have to navigate you have to be selfless you have to sacrifice you shouldn't waste too much money because early in the life you probably don't have that much don't marry for money because money will come and go but marry for good character and conduct discipline the dean the connection with the maker and so on those are characteristics you will cherish right up to the end your children will be the best of kids because they've got lovely parents you were part of that choice sacrifice but the minute you have eyes looking everywhere and wishing and wanting and then you've got the money to go and do things you end up doing things that there are an embarrassment not just for you but for your children and not just your children but you lose contentment as much as you think you have temporary enjoyment of this world it's very temporary may Allah protect all of us the temporary enjoyment if it comes in the displeasure of the Almighty you're not going to go far in life just be disciplined you go home early you put your phone aside and you look at the people around you and you express your love your respect you serve them you help them you smile with them that is what allah wants from us may allah grant us happy homes once again may allah grant us happy homes once again When Allah asks us to do something, it's normally things we can understand. A lot of what he says, we can understand it. Why is he telling us this and that? We can understand a few things we might not yet understand, depending on your level of knowledge. But do it, it's better for you. Here's the Prophet Abraham. All the Semitic faiths believe in the Prophet Abraham. May peace be upon him. You'll read the story of the sacrifice from people of other faiths. A little discrepancy here and there perhaps we believe in our version nonetheless the lesson is still the same develop a link oh my lord let the hearts of the people incline towards this place little did he know this place is going to be transformed into a town and then a city and then a harbor for everyone to go and then will come the last ummah where it will be a pillar of faith for every single believer who can afford it to visit there it was the prayer of abraham the call in the desert why do you go for hajj the prophet abraham says let the hearts of the people come towards them and where they are the place as well as the people so allah decided to make it compulsory so you've got to go at least once in your lifetime from amongst us i'm sure many have been for hajj and many have been for umrah which is the minor pilgrimage what is that it's the call of abraham in the desert and then what happened he says oh my lord grant them with fresh produce tamarat so that they can be thankful give them fresh produce imagine how absurd it may be for you and i to be in a desert and to say oh my lord open this land so that there can be fresh produce when it is desert but abraham knew nothing is impossible for allah the almighty nothing's impossible for him you ask him he will give you and keep on asking him and repeat it and don't worry about saying it again and again and crying and asking don't lose hope when the time is right he will give it to you and he is so merciful he says if i know in my knowledge that this is not good for you i'll keep it away from you through my blessing we spoke about this yesterday and if i know that something else is better for you i'll give you the other thing through my blessing so just trust me are you ready to trust the almighty trust him what hasn't he given you he's blessed you with so much we're always taught Unduru ila man huwa dunakum. in order for you to express gratitude you have to look at those who have less than you so where have we gone wrong we all look at those who have more than us because of social media in fact i can correct it 
We look at those who have less than us, who pretend to have more than us because they Photoshop things online and they've gone into shops and so on to test clothing and everything else and do a photo shoot as though they were affording all the Gucci and everything else. But when you looked at it carefully, it said Suchi and not Gucci. Yes. The latest pair of Nikkei's. You know what's a Nikkei? The fake of a Nike. And what are we doing? Strutting with those. We're showing the world. People are saying, oh, look, I don't even have proper shoes. People are crying because they are comparing their lives with yours and you don't even have as much as they have. They probably have better than you. Whoa, whoa. Imagine, like I said earlier, today we are taught to look at those who have less than us. We are looking at those who have less than us who are pretending to have more. So we are not happy and as it is they were never happy anyway. That's where we've lost the contentment. Look at what you've got. Your family, your home, your street, your neighborhood, everything. Wallahi, there are people who would cry and die to have what you have. I promise you. So show gratitude. Show gratitude. Be happy. What don't you have? Did you eat today? Did you put anything in your mouth? Did you have a little bit of liquid or water? Yes. Well, I tell you what, you're better than millions out there who are hunting for food right now. Wow. Say Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. Here we are seated in a beautiful place. There are others who don't have electricity. They don't even have a fan. They don't have anything. And here we are complaining. May Allah forgive me and then all of us. When I entered the hall, they told me this hall is three degrees cooler than what it was yesterday. And I said, that's going to be a big difference. And I, I promise you it is big difference. Mashallah. Maybe I should say a few more things so that tomorrow it will be another three degrees less. Or by this evening, inshallah. But my brothers and sisters, the point being raised is build your relationship with your maker. Do something. Worship him correctly. Discipline yourself. It will only help you. Don't lose yourself because this world when you lose yourself, it will offer you more and greater loss and more absurd things that you may regret later on that you've done, but you did it. It's too late. When you lose yourself, the loss goes beyond your imagination because you did one thing silly. The people who did it with you will prod you to do another silly thing. You did a second silly thing. And then they will laugh at you without telling you that they're laughing at you because in front of you, they're not laughing and they get you to become the manager of all these silly things. And what happens? You start doing absurd things, things that were unimaginable. And you think it's going to bring you happiness and joy and contentment. Yet it swung you straight into the clutches of shaitan. Don't do that. Just be disciplined. Thank the almighty. The call of Abraham in the desert when he called out, Allah says, we ensured that the hearts of everyone inclined towards this place and its people to this day. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. What are the other prayers that he made? He says, Rabbana waja'alna muslimayni laka wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimatan lak. Oh my Lord, the two of us, myself and Ismail, my son, make us submitters unto you and from my offspring, my children, my progeny, make them submitters unto you. Let them obey you. Let them worship you. These are the types of prayers he made, not for himself alone. Himself, his children, his unborn progeny and for all of us. Who was praying for us? Ibrahim, may peace be on him. A call in the desert. He says, Almighty, make them submitters unto you. And he says, Oh Allah, from my children, make the prophets, make them prophets. I tell you what, the prophet Abraham, and this is not just an Islamic belief. It's actually the Semitic faiths that believe something similar. The prophets that came after him were all from his own progeny. Name them. They're from his family. Name them. Who? Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub. That's Jacob, Joseph, and all of them. And all those children and Moses and Aaron and Suleiman and David, Solomon and David and who else? And 
John and Jesus and all of them. Oh, who are they? Wallahi, they are the family of Ibrahim. May peace be on him. How was he so blessed? He was blessed because he followed instructions without understanding them. The fact that he knew this came from my Lord, I did it. It wasn't anything absurd anyway. Once you know this is from my Lord, he's asked me to pray five times a day. Why five? Why five? That's like asking me how high. Agree? It's an excuse. Why do I have to get up early in the morning? Get up and see and try. And you know what? Those who get up early in the morning are the most successful. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, says at night, if you have nothing constructive to, constructive to do, go to sleep, go to bed early. I need help with that too. Why should I lie? I'm on my phone for quite a few hours. I won't lie to you. I'm also guilty. I will work on it. I'm a human just like you. And I will keep working on it. But that doesn't mean what's right can be changed. What's right, it's right. You are supposed to go to bed if you have nothing constructive to do. So that you can get up early and utilize the day in the most efficient way. Today, medicine tells us. At that time, medicine was not where it is today. Medicine could not confirm it. But today, medicine tells us the sleep of the early hours of the night is far more quenching for you in every single way. And to be awake early morning is far healthier for you in every single way than you can imagine. And we were taught that just by way of instruction from the Lord. And we had to say, why? Why should I sleep right now? I'm not tired. I've got kids who tell me that. Well, they used to. Let's go to bed. But I'm not tired. I didn't ask you whether you were tired or not. Just go to bed. But I'm not going to be able to sleep. All those are excuses. But that's the kids of today for you. They give you back for everything you say. You're breathing, they breathe back. How's that? <laughs> my brothers, my sisters, we are blessed in so many beautiful ways. And we need to count our blessings and appreciate them in order for us to be blessed even more. Wouldn't you like to be protected from the, by the Almighty from harm and from the devil? Well, here goes Ibrahim makes a dua and a supplication. Oh, my Lord, let, let prophethood be in my offspring. Our Lord did that for him. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is from the children of Ismail. Other prophets from the children of Isaac, Ishaq, may peace be upon them all. We are taught to say, May peace be upon them all, all of them. They were amazing, amazing prophets and messengers who came to teach us the goodness. They suffered and struggled in the face of those who harmed them and challenged them. But they didn't mind because they knew I'm doing this for my Lord. You and I will go through struggles in our lives. We have to. It's part of living. It's part of the test. Nothing will happen exactly according to your liking because what would be the purpose of having a paradise that we are promised where everything will be as per your liking when already it's as per my liking. So Allah says on earth, it's not going to happen according to your liking so that you value paradise and the day that will come when everything will be as per my liking. I remember speaking about the Islamic explanation of what you're going to get in paradise. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Fiha ma la aynun ra'at wa la udunun sami'at wa la khatara ala qalbi bashar in paradise will be that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and it hasn't even crossed the mind of anyone. It hasn't crossed your heart. That's the Arabic term. And Allah says in the Quran, Fiha ma tashtahihi al anfusu wa taladhu al a'yun. In paradise, you will have everything that you desire and everything that is delicious to your eyes. Wow. Delicious is supposed to be to the tongue, right? The Quran says, no, in heaven, it's delicious to the eyes. Oh, you see, it's yours. <laughs> Imagine. I'd be looking all day. All these things are mine. Subhanallah. Allah says, you're going to get everything your heart desires and whatever is delicious to the eyes. And you're going to be there forever and ever. 
So you have these people come up to you by default all the time and they say, listen, I only have one question. Just one question for you. What is it? In heaven, will I still be married to the same guy? If that's the case. I don't even want to go there, man. You know? But the explanation is unique. When you see the same guy, you're going to be like, whoa! Is that my guy? Whoa, 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 whoa. And when your guy sees you, it's going to be even more. Oh, oh my queen, subhanallah. By the way, I better not say my queen because in some languages, queen means. You know. And your wife will say, well, I don't need her in, in, in paradise right next to me again. You know, may Allah forgive us. But what I mean is my princess or whatever you want to say. Okay. Or queen in the proper English sense. Let's use that. But my brothers and sisters, as you see, you are how you want to be. And the one looking at you will be how they want to be, how they want you to be as they're looking at you. So to you, you might be tall with whatever type of hair you want and the eyes and whatever you feel you'd like to be. And the person looking at you, you would look exactly how they would like you to be and so on. It's mind boggling. And what evidence do I have that it's beyond your imagination? Can I tell you? The fact that you were in the wombs of your mothers and you were alive there and you came out, you crossed a membrane, you crossed a membrane, the belly of your mother, a, a little membrane of a, a few centimeters, not more than a few centimeters. When you crossed that outside, there is a life that you never imagined existed. You were in the womb floating around warm enjoying having your own world to yourself and you loved it until it became a little bit narrow because you were growing bigger and bigger and you started thinking to yourself ah what's going to happen now i'm going to die i'm going to die but when i die all this amnion fluid that i really love is it going to be there with me is it going to come with me if it's not i don't want to go amnion fluid does anyone want it now not at all you'll say yuck if someone were to give it to you in a cup but you were there, you enjoyed that fluid, you lived on it. You grew with it. You were warm because the temperature of it was right. Everything was correct. And then one day when you thought it's the end of everything, it was actually the beginning of everything. The same applies according to Allah. He says we created you and in the same way we are going to send you to the next level. What is it? It is also a membrane, a thin membrane between this life and the next. And whatever you thought of here is not going to be there because remember, everything you are making use of today you found it on earth and you're going to leave it here what is your clothing is it not cotton where did you find the cotton did it not grow in the farm around the corner what else did they do the leather where is it from the cow where did you find the cow on earth the cars you're driving where's the steel from where's the aluminium aluminium from where is everything from? It's on earth. When the gold, the silver, the money, whatever else, where is it from? It's on earth. You have to leave it here. You have to leave it here. It does not qualify to go beyond this place. Just like whatever was in the amnion sack does not qualify to go to you today. And do you remember any moment in the womb of your mother? No. By the way, this is Trinidad. You never expect. If anyone remembers, put your hand up and come talk to us. Anyone remember? Yes, the brother there. Come, come, let us know. Oh, sorry. I think he's just stretching. My brothers and sisters, you don't remember, but you were there. You know you were there because you know what? The rest of the people scanned you, saw you. Nowadays, you get a 3D scan. They can take a passport picture before you were born. Do you know that? 3D scan. You see everything. You can see what they look like. And the normal thing is soon as a child is born oh who does she look like <laughs> give them a break let them grow a little bit see they keep changing every day for the first few years by the way but that's normal it's man we get excited we are happy the child has no memory zero memory of what happened zero memory of the day they were born no one has that memory anyone from amongst us subhanallah no one but you were born you came onto the earth 
and Allah promises you, do you know what? Just about when you're going, don't be depressed about going back to your Lord. You have to go. It's certain that you are going to go. You're older, bones are aching. You have a little bit of health matter. This, that's normal. It has to happen. But you, you should be excited that, you know what? I'm going to go back to my Lord. I seek forgiveness. I try my best. I'm a decent person. I worship him alone. I fulfill whatever. I always try my best. I'm a human. I faltered. Whenever I faltered, I seek forgiveness. And I know my Lord is most forgiving, most merciful. When I go back to him, I know he's going to take me to a better place. And I know he's going to give me what he's promised. Now when you die, you die with a smile. You've no option. You have to go. So go, go with a smile. You meet your Lord once again. May Allah Almighty make it easy for us. We are concerned about the day we go, but that concern should lead us to do good things and have hope. Have hope in the mercy of the Almighty. If you think, oh, you know, I committed sins. I really don't know where I'm going to go. That's shaitan making you think that way because we've all committed sins, myself included. But what did we do? We all constantly seek the forgiveness of the Almighty. Oh Allah, forgive me, I'm human. When I sinned against you, I didn't sin because I want to defy you. Not at all. I will never defy you. I sinned because I'm a human being, human nature, human weakness made me sin. But forgive me, I'm not going to do it again. And Allah says, you are forgiven. Islam is a faith based on forgiveness and mercy. And it's a secret between you and your maker. You don't ever have to go around confessing to anyone what you did. It's in your own closet. That's it. And you wipe it out between you and your maker. Oh my Lord, you know more than I do what I've done. I turn to you. That was the prophet Abraham. He says, I turn my face to the one who created the heavens and the earth. And I will worship him alone. So my brothers and sisters, remember something amazing. You call out to the Almighty. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us he hears you before you utter the words. He knows better than you what you want. And he will give you, he will respond to you. Keep calling out to him, keep asking him. Nothing is impossible for him. Ask him whatever you want and keep asking him. That's what I learned from Ibrahim alayhi salam. He prayed for his progeny. How many of us pray for our own children, let alone progeny? And thereafter, progeny. Oh my Lord, bless me with children who will be the coolness of my eyes. Bless me with grandchildren and great-grandchildren and my progeny to come, those whom I may never see. Let them be beautiful, amazing, lovely people who can contribute positively to this earth and world while worshipping you and preparing for their journey to you and unite us and gather us in the hereafter in a way that we can finally meet all of our, our families and others. If you've lost a loved one, you're going to be united with the loved one. How do I know? Because Allah Almighty said so. You lost a loved one. It's hard. It's tough. You may not sleep at night at times. Unlike what we were saying earlier, you should be. But trust the Almighty. He says we will gather you with them. Don't worry. Bear patience. You're not the first person to lose a loved one and you're not going to be the last one. And when finally you pass away, that will be someone else's loss. They will have lost a loved one in you. You see? It's okay. That's the way the world works. So lead your life in such a beautiful way. Oh, son of Adam, when you came to this world, you came crying and those around you were smiling in happiness, weren't they? When you came, weren't you crying? The little cry of a baby, as soon as you're born, the first thing you hear is that, that, that unique cry of a newborn. I know because I have children and grandchildren. And I tell you something, that unique cry of the newborn, something amazing. As beautiful as it is and as painful as it might be for the child, but everyone else is smiling. Congrats, congrats, you're born. But the baby's crying. Relax, they're supposed to cry. I always say, let your child cry. You know, we were coming on the aircraft and there was someone with a child sitting next to me. And I told him, listen, I've got 10 children and grandchildren. And I want to tell you something. I'm an expert in child rearing and bringing up children. If this child cries, don't worry. Children are meant to cry. You don't get excited and don't get upset. Don't worry. The child, let them cry. Even if the world wants to look at you, eh, don't worry. The children are there to cry. The minute you get upset and you start getting angry and whatever, then you are at fault. 
let the child cry. And you know what I say? Those of you who know, the children that cried the most have the best voices. They have the best voices, nice, loud voice. I see the Quran reciters, I asked them, did you used to cry a lot when you were little? So I never thought of it. Say, so go ask your mother. One or two of them came back to me, said, I used to cry so much. My mother was so upset. I said, well, tell her to say, Alhamdulillah, look, you're a top reciter voice. What a lovely throat you have, man. Larynx voice box opened up because ah, ah, whole day, Allahu Akbar. Allah forgive us. At least that's a bit of motivation for the mothers out there, right? And now whenever you hear a child cry, they say, that's going to be a qari, inshallah. Right? <laughs> My brothers and sisters, O oh son of Adam, when you came onto the earth, you were crying and those around you were smiling in happiness and joy. So live your life in such a way that when you die, those around you will be crying at the loss and you would leave smiling. See, when you came to this world, you were crying and those around you were happy. Live your life in such a way that when you go, you will be happy and they will all be crying at the loss. Oh, we lost the sister. What a lovely person. We lost this brother. What an amazing guy. And then they start finding out about you all nice things. You know, they used to do this and this person did that and that. And subhanallah, so many hidden good deeds they did. Alhamdulillah, that's a good thing. Unlike us today, someone hears about the death of a person. They say, Oof, just as well. They died five years too late. They caused so many problems. And what did I just hear? You know, as a Muslim, when you hear the news of the death of someone, what should we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. What does it mean? We all belong to Allah and we're all going to return to Him. Unfortunately, when a troublemaker passes away and they say, you know what, that Uncle Harris passed away. They say, Alhamdulillah, did he really pass away? Are you sure? Just find out, make sure. That means that man was a problem. So ask yourself, what type of a life would you like to live? I tell you something. If you lived a good life and the people around you truly miss you and the good deeds you used to do for as long as you had a connection with your maker, you are going to a better place. When everyone bears witness that you were an honorable, upright, beautiful, amazing human being, the Almighty says, we will forgive you and we will grant you paradise. So lead your life in a beautiful way. I look forward to seeing you a little bit later this evening, inshallah, with the last of the lectures of this beautiful series, The Call of Abraham in the Desert. And inshallah, until then, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.